everyone. It's Henry! And mowers and blowers! Good morning. So our stretch of six or seven days of absolutely gorgeous 60 to 75 degree weather is over! Uh, we're supposed to get three days of consecutive rain. I think it's from the remnants of Hurricane Ada, E-T-A. Where do they get these names from, man? Uh, anyway, it's not raining this moment, so I went and walked my dog, Boba. You guys know Boba over the years. Well, he's only two years old, but since he was a little pup, every time I walk around the neighborhood, he just leads me to machines. And today is no exception. It's not anything huge or big, but it's kind of interesting. So we just got back from walking, and this is what we picked up. Just around the corner is an Echo PB2100 leaf blower. Missing the bottom chute, still has the middle chute, right? And this is kind of sticky. When I first got it, right, it was just up like that. But then this thing was engaged, you know what I'm saying? So then I disengaged it, and it looks like it works now. Let's see if it has any compression. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, God knows how long this has been sitting somewhere, you know? Let's see compression. Oh. It's locked up. It's locked up. So, I don't know. You guys know I hate working on two strokes, you know what I mean? But uh, it is an Echo, you know? I do like Echo products. They all seem to be pretty uh, reliable machines, you know. But uh, it is locked up. As you can see, it looks like hell. I don't know. One day if I run out of stuff to do, ha! I'll work on it. Uh, today, right now it's not raining. Ooh. up there to build a nest oh there it is thanks boba did a good job um, if it rains later I'll be in the garage and I'll be able to take this foot pad off kind of chip away all the loose paint and all and all that and uh, Clean that up a bit, and then uh, if I have a can of uh, orange paint, I'll paint it up. Uh, as you know from the previous two episodes, I've been working on this uh, Husqvarna 2346 XLS with the uh, Briggs Vanguard engine in it. And uh, last episode, we actually did a comprehensive carburetor clean on this Vanguard 23 horsepower V-twin vertical shaft engine. It was my very first time um, at all, you know, working with a vertical shaft Vanguard V-twin. And I had never taken the carburetor off before. And, uh, you know, while it, it, it was pretty easy to get the carburetor off with the exception of the choke linkage, right? Uh, cleaning the carburetor itself really wasn't very hard but it did have a lot of jets, right? You guys saw, I removed four jets out of there. Two long ones and two stubby ones, right? It also has the two fuel mixture screws on the top, and it had a lot of holes, a lot of orifices, right? I was happy that uh, I didn't screw up any of the gaskets because I heard everything from the Vanguard is very expensive. I believe it's Japanese made, you know? So, uh, you know, the quality is good. And you know it's a good quality engine when it has an oil cooler on it, you know what I mean? So, uh, it surged pretty well, you know, and so we had to get rid of the surging. And so that gave me an opportunity to make a video about complete disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly of the carburetor. And what happened? So stoked. Ran absolutely flawless, you know? So flawless that I think the engine is done. I mean... This is a perfectly running engine now, you know? 
Uh, like I said, I'm gonna button up this thing with a little bit of paint. Hopefully I have some orange paint. If not, I'm going to, uh, even if I'm done, I'm gonna park this in the back because I, I gotta make room in my garage for my next projects, you know, which is probably uh, gonna be either my LT-1000 that has a surgeon carburetor or that uh, Poulon XR uh, lawn tractor, 38 inch wide deck with super weenie rear wheels. Got that from my friend Mark from East Northport. He gave it to me for free. It's 12.5 horsepower overhead valve engine and it Briggs. Um, and I don't know what's wrong with it. And he told me that he didn't know what was wrong with it either, except for the fact that it has a dead battery and it didn't start. So, I mean, it, it doesn't look like it's gonna be too difficult to get it going, but uh, while I was gonna start working on this now, it's not raining now. So while it's not raining now, and my daughter actually went to school because she alternates days, one day remote learning, one day um, at home learning, you know, that, that kind of thing. And um, she recently had a, she's on a soccer team. She recently came and she hurt her ankle. So she's been limping at home for the past three or four days. This was the first day she actually went to school. She was good enough to go. So while my LT-1000 Craftsman tractor is right next to her bedroom, she's not home. So it gives me an opportunity to go and do a carburetor uh, replacement. Because this is a hydrostatic, you have to lift up one side of the wheel to get it out. Pain. This is the new carburetor I got. It's for Color Command. It was about $15 on eBay. Uh, all the ones that are sold now on eBay, other than the OEM ones, the Chinese built ones, the, the, the cheap ones, they're not adjustable. Uh, this one defers a little bit because this one actually has a fixed jet uh, screw here, which you could actually open up and clean, whereas the other one you couldn't. So that ha that's something, you know? So I'm just gonna try this one. This one has a fuel solenoid on it. That one doesn't, so I'm just gonna use that uh, bowl nut and replace it with this fuel solenoid because I don't want it. So this is a brand new carburetor. It should be just plug and play, with the exception of the little rubber grommet that goes right there. So I'll just remove it from that one, put it on here. Uh, it's supposed to be a half inch nut over here. So I have a half inch wrench. Need 10 millimeter bolts to remove the air cleaner base. And then a few lines and that should be it. That's all it takes to, to clean the carb. Got a vent tube here, vacuum hose, remove the base. This thing slides right out. Fuel clamp, hose clamp out. Fuel line. Z bend here. Z bend there. There's a little grommet there. And then remove this grommet. new carburetor that doesn't have the grommet it's the plastic grommet in the hole okay I'm gonna remove the uh, fuel solenoid Bowl nut. Crap. Grass is gonna die around here for sure. Of course, this doesn't. Yeah, it does. Okay. I'm gonna 
place the nut only. thing through here choke through there with the through gaskets in place place the fuel nozzle back on there how easy is this so far huh super super easy Got a gasket there. Attach the hose. Place the two nuts. You're a nut. I'll tighten these up. Give it a try. So I've got the fuel turned up, turned back on. So far, so good. No leaks, right? <clears throat> Choke it for the first time. Give it a try. Oh, the key. The key. I lost the key. On the air cleaner and park it still some gas in here so i'll probably use it to pick up some leaves deplete the gas and then park it for the winter so how about that huh honestly that might be one of the fastest carburetor replacements that i've done in the field when i say in the field i mean not in the garage you know going to a place with a handful of tools that you know you'll need and there's replacing the carburetor just like that honestly Without taking off that silly uh, wing nut, it took forever, you know what I'm saying? That was all off or whatever, you know? I mean, that took a total of 10 minutes. So uh, the actual carburetor replacement was like five or six minutes, you know? So think about this, fellas. If you had the know-how to do that and somebody uh, had a carburetor that needed replacing, you know, because you knew that the carburetor uh, was just gunked up and all you had to do was replace the carburetor, $15 you'd spend for the carburetor, right? You go to somebody's house if you had a mobile service, right? And you just change their carburetor in 10 minutes, man. You can charge them 150 bucks for that service. You know what I'm saying? 150 bucks for what I just did. Something to think about. So I've got this old carburetor that I know surges, right? But I tell you what, I'm going to save this. You know why? Because uh, I actually have... Uh, Kohler Command right here that may need a new carburetor. I have, I have two. I have two Kohler Commands. I don't know where the other one is. 
two color commands that will eventually need this carburetor, you know? Well, I'll save it for later. Now let's get started I'm doing some grinding. Get the old paint chips off. I'm gonna find out if I have any orange paint first. So while I was looking for orange paint, I couldn't find any. But I did find this bottom tube from another leaf blower. It's got like these plastic tabs on the inside. If I just cut them, this should slip right over this. That's that. Cut this piece over there. Get some Gorilla tape. There you go. Now I've got a tube. So I'm over here at the hood area. This paint actually isn't too bad with the exception of maybe a little rust over here from some scrapage. This part here is very badly faded. I'm gonna put some automatic transmission fluid here and see if we can clean this up a little bit. Usually it works pretty well with plastics. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yep. It's like new now. Look at that. Just do this before you sell it. Money all day long. I'm gonna go over the whole tractor now with this. Well, maybe not the whole tractor, just the plastics, you know? Just so it uh, gives it a little bit of protection for the winter. How about that, huh, fellas? Cool. I wasn't gonna show you this, but I had to show you. Some transmission fluid on just an old rag. Look 
at this. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Ding, son! Of course, I might as well try to pull out the headlights, too, the lenses for the headlights. Clean them because it's all, like, yucky in here. Definitely. Well, listen, so I think I might try to clean out my garage a little bit. I know. Because uh, I'm going to have to make room for my snow blowers. So all the way back here, I've got like uh, four engines sitting over on the side there, plus these bikes and stuff, and I don't know what to do with them. Uh, I've got like this shelf, you know, with all kinds of stuff in here, right? I haven't seen any of that stuff. I haven't used any of the stuff on the first shelf or the second shelf in like five years. So, you know what they say, if you don't use it for a year or don't look at it for a year, you don't need it. So I was going to um, throw these books away. And I was wondering if maybe any of you guys wanted them before I throw them away, right? So you got the Home Depot Outdoor Projects, Flooring, All About Roofing and Siding, uh, Landscape Structures and Decks, Basic Wiring Techniques, Flower Gardening 123, Tools and Techniques, Plumbing Step-by-Step -step Complete, Manual of Home Repair, Router Table Book, Deck Plans, Auto Show 1986, Basic Auto Repair, Manual basic remodeling techniques. And the improve, home improvement cost guide. So all these books uh, belong to my dad. And uh, he gave them to me when he passed away. Uh, my mom did. And it's been sitting here for about six, seven years. And I haven't even opened it or looked at it because... Um, I'm not really into any of this stuff, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna throw this away. But uh, if you guys want it, any of you guys or know somebody who just bought a house or something and could use these books if they wanna do it yourself, right? Uh, media mail is relatively cheap. So I can just throw all those books into a box and just cover the media mail uh, shipping, like uh, 15, 20 dollars, something like that. So if you know of anybody, let me know, okay? Write in the contents, uh, con comments if you guys are interested in that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to clean up these lights. I did ATF all over it. Uh, maybe pump up the tires, grease the fittings. Did all that. And this tractor, I'm going to take that Lucas Oil flag off. Because if I'm going to store it for the winter, I don't want it to get trashed. So uh, this has a roof on it, which is great. You know, I'll park it in the back. So, so because we're thinking about the winter now, I want to protect this valuable engine from uh, the harmful effects of ethanol buildup when you store your engines, right? Some of you guys might have seen my most recent uh, commercial I made for Lucas Oil Products. And basically I'm gonna put in a fuel shutoff so that I could just shut off the gas when I'm ready. Right, and um, let the engine run until all the gas has been depleted from the carburetor. And then this, if I had a lot of gas in it, of course. If I don't have a lot of gas in it, I'll just run it until it's dry, you know. That will, that will prevent ethanol from building up in your um, carburetor and trashing your carburetor for next year, you know. So I'm putting the simple fuel shutoff on. It's very easy to install. I'm just going to do it on the fly here. That's one end. And then you put another hose clamp on the other end. And this way will be good for storing later. I don't know how much gas is in here. Uh, I've never put gas in here so far since I got it. It's been running off the gas. It's in the gas tank. I have absolutely no idea how much gas is in here. But uh, in case it, there's a lot, you know, I don't plan on running this too much. Maybe I'll go around the block with it or something like that. But here we go. Now we have a fuel shutoff that shuts off the fuel right and then when i'm ready to store this for the winter right 
I'll just shut this off. No more fuel will be going through here. It'll be sucking all the remaining fuel in this hose into the carburetor. I'll just let it run it out. And then once it's run out, the uh, remnants of the remaining glistening gas will just dry up from erosion, I mean from uh, evaporation. And then uh, this carburetor will be, will be good to go for next year when you open this up again and the fuel will run into the carburetor. I'm gonna put a little bit of, uh, always to put some stabilizer in there and then you'll be good to go. So there you go, that's a, that's a two minute fuel shutoff valve. Just took two seconds, you know what I'm saying? Everybody should do that. This thing costs like a buck or two. So it didn't take too long. Scraping all the rust and the uh, loose paint chips out. And um, I was looking for that orange paint. I could have sworn I had a half a can of orange paint, you know, from, from another Husqvarna, you know. But I uh, couldn't find it. So I had to just use some gray primer that I had, you know a 10 year old can or something and the nozzles all stuck you know what i mean it only worked when i did it sideways and shaked it and then about halfway through the nozzle stuck again so no paint would come out so i just i just found some uh gray rust-oleum whatever gloss paint and just went over it just to cover up the rust spots you know what i mean and it acts like another layer of primer too you know what i mean so uh when i Get a chance, the next time I go to Home Depot, I'll buy a can of orange paint, go over that area, put the pads back on, and it'll look a whole lot better, you know? Uh, again, I still don't know what I'm gonna do with this tractor, but it seems like everything works really well. <laughs> and you guys know, that engine, I'll never let go of that engine, you know what I mean? Uh, brand new engine like that, I think it's $1,600, you know? That's a lot of money. So uh, I know I could probably get uh, four or $500 for that engine alone, you know? But I think I should keep that engine because in the future, I'm going to get a nice enough tractor, you know what I mean, with a blown engine in it. And maybe I'll keep that for myself or something. But God, I got uh, Jamal Altet, Blue Bayou, Rodimus Prime. Those are all my own personal ones. Plus the 616Z, Zero Turn. I can't keep four personal mowers, you know what I mean? Just got, don't have the room, you know? Not to mention that. I only use, like, the, the Zero Turn mostly. But uh, anyway, I... I got this all worked out. Hey, look at this. Look at this t-shirt that I got from my brother. It's a uh, old Janet Jackson concert one. Hey, this might be a collector's item. Anyway, I wore it so my other clothes won't get dirty. Uh, so that's that. Uh, after this dries, I'm gonna, if it's nice enough out, I'll go take it out for a ride around the block maybe, you know, and then park this in the back. I gotta find a place to park it too. And then while I'm here, might as well grease the fittings. Uh, see what happens. I don't know. Doesn't seem to be going in. Just making a mess, really. This left one's working. Nice. Yep, okay, finally got some in there. It came out the back too, on the bottom. This side worked out pretty well. And that's it. That's my video for today. Changing a uh, Kohler Command Chinese carburetor because it surged. I think if I drop that first one into a ultrasonic cleaner and let it soak for a bit, I bet you that carburetor would work just fine, you know? Uh, scraped off all the uh, rust off of this Husqvarna 2346 XLS, my Vanguard engine. Now this tractor just needs some orange paint and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, you know? Park it in the back for the winter or something, but how about that engine? That engine's great. Uh, grease the fittings on the uh, steering. And then that's my rainy afternoon, fellas. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers.